Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're going to be taking a look at securing applications with AppArmor. AppArmor is a kernel security module that's available with SUSE and Debian-based distributions, and it allows you to limit the capabilities of an application, such as its ability to read and write to the file system and to the network. The difference between something like AppArmor and with traditional file-based permissions is that AppArmor is mandatory access control, where your typical uh, file permissions are discretionary. So with a mandatory access control system, even the root user has to abide by it. And you'll see that in just a minute when we hop into it. So let's go ahead and get started. In order to follow along, the first thing you're going to have to do is install the AppArmor utils. You can do that through the command prompt using sudo apt install appArmor hyphen utils. And I've already installed it. With that out of the way, let's take a look at the first example that I've put together for us. And we'll do this in real time so you can see all of the troubleshooting steps that are involved. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at them sample onec and you can see in here, it's a very simple program. Basically, all it does is take a command line argument and it writes some random output to that file and then it closes it out. So let's go ahead and compile this and then run it. So if we do GCC uh, sample one and then we do output sample, we can dot slash sample and then we'll do test one. And then you can see that it wrote to it. So let's go ahead and remove test one. And we'll generate a app armor profile for it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the app armor status and make sure that there's nothing already running for it. So we'll run sudo aa status. And if we scroll up, you can see that there's no profile for the sample. We have 22 that are in force mode. That means they're actually being enforced by AppArmor. We have two profiles that are in complain mode, which means that if it violates the AppArmor profile, it's not going to stop it. It's simply going to log it. And then we have four processes that are also in enforce mode. So let's go ahead and generate a profile for it. To generate the profile, we're going to use sudo aa uh, genprof. And if you don't specify an absolute path, for example, if we say ping, it's going to search in your path variable. So for this, we need to specify an absolute path. So it's going to be home, Nathan, desktop, sample. Once we do this, we're going to need to open up another terminal and run it. So we're going to open up another terminal. We're going to do dot slash sample and we'll run test one. And just test one. Then we'll close that out and we will scan. And it's going to say that we need write permissions to desktop test one, which is true. So we're going to allow it and then we're going to save it and finish. So let's go ahead and clear that and we'll take a quick look at the actual profile. So we'll sudo vim etsy and these are stored in apparmor.d and then we're going to look for home Nathan desktop sample. So it's the absolute path of the program. Just instead of slashes, it's going to have dots. So let's go ahead and take a look in here and see what it created for us. So you can see that we have the include abstraction space, and that is not a comment. It's just how they do includes, kind of like with C. And then you can see here, we can read to home Nathan desktop sample, and then we can write to home uh, star so uh, Nathan or any other user but only if you're the owner of it and then desktop test one so let's go ahead and close that out and rerun sample so dot slash sample and we'll do test one and that should work but now let's go ahead and rerun it and do test two and it fails so let's try sudo dot slash sample test two and it fails again. So even the root user can't create test two. Let's see why that's the case. Let's go back into the profile. 
So we can see here in the profile, we only have write permissions to write to a file called test1. If we wanted to be able to write files of any name to the desktop, we're gonna have to modify this and we'll go ahead and put a star. If you put a star, that means only the top level directory, so anything in desktop. If you created another directory in desktop, say desktop slash test, and you wanted to write into there, you'd have to do two stars, but for this, we only need one. So we'll put the star, write quit. We're gonna have to disable it. And then we're going to have to reinforce it. And then we can try it again. So we'll do uh, sample test two, see if it works. How about three, four. Excellent, so we got that one working. All right, let's take a look at our second example. This time, instead of a binary, we are going to be sandboxing a bash script. So it's here, sample two, let's take a look at it. So we have user bin environment bash, and then we are going to w get the latest kernel from kernel.org and drop it into the downloads directory. And after it downloads, we're gonna list out all the contents of that directory. So it actually seems pretty simple, but there is quite a bit that's going on here. For example, in this very top line, we're invoking two separate binaries. We're invoking um, env environment, and then we're invoking bash. The next line down, we're invoking yet another binary, wget, and then we're having it reach out to the internet and then writing to downloads. And then we're invoking yet another binary, which is ls, which is reading the downloads directory. So even though you would think that sandboxing a bash script would be simple, it's actually a little more complicated than sandboxing a binary. But let's take a look at it and see if we can do it. So just like the last time, we're going to use sudo aa genprof, and then we have to specify the absolute path to it. So it's going to be home, Ethan, desktop, sample, 2.sh. And then we're going to open up another terminal, and we're going to run it. So we're going to run dot slash sample. I didn't give it execute permission, so we're going to use shmod uh, plus x sample two, sample two, and then we're gonna run it. Good, let's close out of here. We're gonna scan. We are going to inherit it, so it's trying to use bash, which it needs to use. Uh, TTY, because it's outputting to the terminal. And then we're gonna save the changes. We're gonna finish clear it. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and take a look at the profile. So we'll use sudo vim etsy apparmor.d and then it's going to be home nathan desktop sample sample2.sh. And you can see here that we have two abstractions, so base and console, and then we have read permissions to sample2.sh. Um, we have execute permissions to bash and environment. So let's see if that allows us to execute it. So we'll quit, clear that, and we'll do dot slash um, sample2.sh again. And we have permission denied. So we're not allowed to use wget and we're not allowed to use ls. Well, when this happens, it still updates the log even though it's in enforce mode. So at this point, we can use sudo aa log prof and then you want to look here and make sure that it's for the correct um, profile so we're gonna inherit wget and we're gonna inherit ls and then we are going to allow the wget rc so we're gonna allow it um, we're gonna allow writing to the downloads we're going to allow writing to uh, downloads again. That's because I think I ran it twice. And then we're going to save it. We're going to clear it. And then let's take a look at the profile one more time before we run it. Sample 2. Okay, so this is what we have now. So we have read permissions to sample 2. 
we have write permissions to the downloads directory, and then we have write permissions for the actual name um, of the download. So uh, the Linux 5.11.10, then you can see it's dot one and dot two. So let's close that out and we'll run it one more time. So we'll do dot slash sample two and it's downloading it and it saved it. Let's try it one more time. Great, and it looks like it's working, but it's really not working because let's run it one more time and see if we can increment that up to three. So now you're seeing that we're getting a permission denied because it's trying to write the Linux 5.11, but it's appending it with dot three this time. So let's go ahead and fix that. So we are going to sudo vim, see apparmor.d and then home sample two. And we can fix that right here. So we'll just remove this line and we'll go up and then delete all of this. And just like last time, we will give it a star here. We'll right quit that and then we need to sudo aa disable sample two, and then we need to enforce it. Great, and now it should be able to write it. Yep, every time we download it now, it should be able to increment. Now, as you likely noticed when we were using the AA gen prof command and especially the AA log prof command, instead of just hitting A for allow or I to inherit, you probably noticed that it had a globbing option. So that is the wild card at the end. So if we take a look again uh, here at the profile, so if we, let's see if we can go back up. If we take a look at the profile, you can see right here we have jump to the end here, we have the star for the globbing. We put that in manually, but if you use logprof and genprof, it does have the option to put it in automatically. I didn't use it because if you do use it through logprof and genprof, the permissions that you give to the profile tend to get carried away pretty quickly. So any globbing I like to do manually, but there is nothing wrong at all with using that through logprof or genprof. And that is how you secure applications using AppArmor. Remember, if you found this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you.